So in like 2012, 2013, 2014, he started a vitamin brand and it only did okay. And then he started also tinkering with a skincare brand, which it actually did much better. It got to like 10 million or so in revenue. He hired a CEO. The CEO kind of like drove it into the ground and didn't really do that well. And so he started focusing again to his vitamin brand. And he's like, look, it's doing okay. But who's the best customer of a vitamin company? <laughs> Dogs. <laughs> because you, and this is it. I'm not disparaging him, but like, do, do they work? Yeah, why not? <laughs> Like Fugazi, you know, like Forget. <laughs> yeah, Fugazi. Welcome to Fugazi Inc. We yeah. make supplements for dogs. They'll never tell you if it works or doesn't work. <laughs> what up? What up? Are we supposed to like start with like a catchphrase now? <laughs> hey, boys and girls, welcome to the business show where you learn how to make so much money that. You'll get taxed out the ass. That's what rich people <laughs> care about taxes. If you don't care about taxes yet, you ain't rich. <laughs> Do you care about taxes? Yeah. I like, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to live my life according to like where the low taxes are, but like it's like the number two or number three thing that I'm thinking about. So I'm thinking about this whole New York, Texas thing. And I like do the math and I'm like, damn, like imagine I got to rent a place for, let's just say like 20 grand a month. Like that's how much taxes I'm paying by moving here right. versus staying or, you know, whatever it is, like a lot of money a month. Well, you have a good thing. You could do the like Texas is your main residence and spend four or five months out of the year in New York. So that's not so bad. That's not so bad. But yeah, I, I, I need to do it with uh, New York and Florida because Texas winter is not like winter, <laughs> winter that's desirable enough that you want to winter there. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dude, have you heard about this? Like the teddy bear law, the teddy bear no, rule? What's that? So I was asking my tax oh, guy, I was like, yeah. where you keep your like possessions. Yeah. Basically I was like, so what's the rule? Is it six months out of the year? What does it take to have residency in some place? And he was like, well, it's, there's a bunch of little factors. He's like, but one, he's like, there was a famous case with Derek Jeter, the, the New York Yankees shortstop. They're like, Jeter wanted Jeter played for the Yankees in New York, but he didn't want to pay New York taxes. He wanted to pay Florida taxes. Cause he's like, look, this is my home. This is where I live. Uh, blah, blah, blah. They're like, but you also have an apartment in New York and you play in New York. So you work there, your home is there and your kids go to school there, I think. And they're, and so they ended up, it got uh, ruled in the, in court and they call it, I think the, the, the name they call it is the, I haven't looked this up. It's like the teddy bear law. And it's basically like, where would you keep your teddy bear? So the place you would call home. So like factors like where your kids go to school, where are the possessions that you love? It all goes into this like umbrella to be like, where do we actually think your home is? And um, and actually, when I first heard this, I was like, wow, that's really like subjective for like a ruling or a law. And actually, it's one of the laws I kind of agree with. I actually think that that is more like how it should be done, which is like, dude, what's the spirit of this? Do you actually right. live here or do you just like stay here for exactly six months and one day every year? And I have to, you know, I don't actually know where you are at any given time. But if, you know, if you're working in a place, your kids go to school there, all your possessions are there, all your friends are there, your family is there. Like, that's where you live. As an avid listener of Dateline, one of the easiest ways to catch the husband who kills the wife is like three weeks before he either bought like, you know, a trash bag and like a shovel or he Googled like how to dispose of a body. And <laughs> last night I found myself Googling and I was so embarrassed to do this. So I went to an incognito window. I was like, I can't Google this. Yeah, like they're going to know that brave. I killed her. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> it, it, and it was like, how does the state that you're visiting know, like, like if I'm renting and I didn't even know what to Google, by the way, I was trying to figure out how to phrase this. But if I yeah. live in Texas, how does New York even know that I'm there if I'm just renting a place? Dude, that's you know? so funny. You said that I did the same thing. And like my queries sound exactly like. Does the IRS really know? It's like <laughs> yeah. if somehow, somehow that's how it's like formatted in my search. Like, it's like yeah, you know, like I would Google what like real deal. Dude, Google needs to understand italicized. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the asterisk and everything. It's like there's one browser that's just like, hmm, this guy's only ever incognito, and he's either looking at porn or taxes. Like, what, what's this guy's <laughs> life like? Right? Because like, basically, it's like you know, I, I'm trying to Google like, um, when you get you know. If the IRS does this to you, 
is that like jail or just a fine? <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, like, yeah. Are we breaking a like, rule or a law? <laughs> right. Is this, are taxes a recommendation or a requirement? <laughs> well, what I learned googling this, googling this was the IRS, and I, I, it makes sense, but I didn't even understand it. IRS is for federal, so like, uh, but I pay my federal taxes no matter what. But I'm like, okay, so then how does the state of New York actually know that right. I was ever here? And I'm trying to like figure. I want to. I'm googling that to follow the rule, but I am curious. Yeah. And I was to like, be in, clear, in case they also listen to podcasts, <laughs> yeah. I'm googling this a for a friend and b to enforce the law on my friend because I'm no. not here for anything else. And I was just curious. I'm just curious. I'm like, literally, how does the state of New York even know that I exist? Uh, I'm I'm the same way. I, I I'm the same way. We're all go down this rabbit hole. Then I'm like 30 minutes in. I'm like, why am I even looking for this? This is not applicable at all to me. But I'm like, <laughs> I just want to know how it works. Like I'll be like, when you keep the receipt, does anybody ever go read the receipts? Like you know what what actually happened? Or like you know, there's this Twitter account I love called uh, How Stuff Works or something like that. I love it. And t today they posted a thing of like it was like how luggage gets loaded into an airplane. So there's a guy in the back of the airplane and then there's like a conveyor belt shooting suitcases at him and he's stacking it like a perfect Tetris grid. And I'm just like, I dude, I love this account because it's always these these things where I'm like, dude, how does the world actually work? Like, I, you know, I know I give them my suitcase, but what happens after that? And it's like sort of the same thing with like either taxes or like uh, like I'll Google just like, you know, rich people don't pay taxes, dot, dot, dot. But how? Like, you know, like yeah. what are these loopholes yeah, yeah, yeah. that I hear about? Are there are there really these loopholes? Like are like, you know, universities have this endowment. What the hell are they doing with that? And I'm just like always trying to get to the bottom of like, I want to have like an actual understanding of the, what's going on. And dude, um, it's so I feel like I have so little understanding about so many things on earth. But it's so funny that you you brought that book. I actually wrote I'm like doing the thing with Maven again, the ideation bootcamp course. And uh, I started talking about the book that I had as a kid called How Stuff Works. And there's another one where they just like split like a power tool into two. And you just see like a picture of like how a school bus like operates or whatever. And I'm like, the reason why researching, which is what you and I do for this podcast, is cool is because whether you like it or not, America and the rest of the well, most of the world is, you know, guided by capitalism and commerce. And so like if you understand how like a business works, just like these books show you how like the luggage guy works, then you kind of understand like what's possible and what's not possible, why laws are the way they are, why art is the way it is. Like you can you it's right. not just money making, but it's just like the earth, like just how the world and society. And so uh, I actually was just writing that yesterday and I totally agree. And I think that's why like studying businesses is cool. And by the way, like, I think most people do this for science. They're like, you know, why is the sky blue? And like, there is an element of that. I'm talking about just like, here's a perfect example. We'll use the luggage one, for example. It's like, question, what happens if you just never pick up your suitcase? Or like, what happens if you just simply, like, I see those bags over there that say that they're waiting for someone to come get them. What happens if they don't? Like, is this just going to pile you, up forever? You like want to know what happens? game of Dr. Mario? And then, yeah, I do know. I'll, yeah, yeah, I'll tee it up for you. Then there is an answer. And it's actually kind of fascinating for somebody who goes and digs in and says, like, okay, but then what? Right? Or like, the, you know, like a kid. Like, well, why do they do that? And why do they do that? Yeah. And why do they do that? And then you get to what's it called? Unclaimed baggage or whatever it's called like that what's that was that the name of the company called? so basically the hustle wrote about it so if you go like the hustle unclaimed baggage there's a company in like rural alabama i think it's alabama or arkansas called unclaimed baggage and they sell 300 million dollars a year worth of unclaimed bags and they it, it's like a huge thrift store you know right and uh and, and, and same thing with like the uh like, you know, the, the shampoo at a hotel, like, you know, I use this thing once. What do they do with it? Do they just refill it and give it to the next person? I'm curious. What do they and do? It's like, oh, actually, there's a whole company that recycles these. They take the half used shampoos from hotels and they say they tell the hotel, hey, we'll pay you nothing for it, but we'll come collect it for you. We'll take it off your hands because you can't give that to the next guest. And then they take that and then they have like a basically a, a way to repackage and resell those. And their brand is around lessening waste on earth and they that company does extremely well and so you actually find companies at the end of all these because again this is like a giant little business ecosystem just in the same way that like you know there's plankton that eats stuff off the whale's head or whatever it's like you know basically there's a little business that's going to solve every one of these edge cases all around the world right there's a person whose job it is to do that thing and if you keep going far enough you'll like find those those little nooks and crannies well, which is a perfect segment for what I want to talk about today, because here's here's what I 
I want to I'm going to give you a bunch of example of things that I've I'm calling frame breaking businesses. So like things that I've discovered that have changed how I thought about stuff. And there's a story. Uh, and, and by the way, today I was I was thinking I was like, today's my leg day because I'm putting you on my back and I'm carrying us for this episode. I, I, I've, <laughs> I've, I've, I've got a I've got like a side p- note, by the way, my mom yesterday while I, I work out with my mom sometimes and she, she was like, Sam Parr's legs. She always calls you Sam Parr, full name. I love it. I don't know if she knows that's like to your first and last, but Sam Parr's legs, man, he's got strong legs. And I was like, yeah, he's great. And she's like, I was just looking at his legs in the last video, the Mr. Beast video, because you were wearing like shorts on the couch or whatever. I was just looking at his legs. I didn't hear anything. <laughs> I was like, all right, mom. <laughs> all right, mom. <laughs> hey, uh, Sean's mom, text me. I'll send you some more pics. And, and I'll, I'll send you some pictures of my legs. I got you. <laughs> it's it's genetics. So uh, people people comment on my legs. I, it's just, it was it, they, I was born that way. So thank you. I appreciate the love, though. Um, all right. So basically, the reason I thought about this was because uh, Dig. So there's this website called Dig. It's actually not that popular anymore, but if you're above 30, you probably know it. Dig and Reddit were competitors. And for a long time, Dig was kind of beating Reddit, but they're both like the whole like front page of the internet type of businesses that had like tens of millions of monthly uniques. And Kevin Rose, the founder of Dig, was on the cover of Time as like meet Silicon Valley's new wonderkin, the guy who is 20 years old and worth a billion dollars or whatever. He was like the Mark Zuckerberg, like the next Zuckerberg. And Dig ended up not actually winning this battle and they're currently for sale and I linked to their financials someone just sent this to me on Twitter so it's not like I got this through um like I didn't like sign up for a service where I had to agree to confidentiality but someone just sent this to me right you and, signed an FDA a full disclosure agreement where you're like I will yeah. put this on blast if you send this <laughs> random shit to me yes, yes, an anonymous FDA. Twitter account <laughs> that's exactly what happened someone just sent it to me I didn't ask questions and I just looked at it but I'll give you like the overview the overview is that over the last year they had 27 million users so what's that two million a month so two, which is not a lot. The hustle gets more than two million a month just on our website. And we don't even try to get traffic on our website. So two million a month. Their revenue slam slam on dig. Nice. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> their, OK, so their revenue for the year was something like a million or like one point three or like it, it was like one point two, one point three. Nothing. Shit. Dig, which was supposed to be like, you know, a great website, only like uh 80 70 91,000 44,000 a month in revenue horrible crazy certified right? small boy shit yeah yeah and but here's the thing is that this rep this this discrepancy we're gonna call it the gap the gap between how much we talked about them and their prestige and like you know the accolades that they get as but from but the the, the gap between where they actually are in reality that gap is huge so instead, I'm going to swap it and we're going to have some frame breaking companies and we're going to talk about the actual good type of gap. Um, and I want to show you a few businesses that people don't talk about that are actually phenomenal and really interesting. So I'm going to give you the first one. The first one I, we maybe talked about before, but I was uh, looking at Michael Bisping. Michael Bisping is a, U- a YouTuber for MMA and a VPN company sponsored him. And I thought that's kind of strange. So I just Googled like, what's a good VPN? And and maybe I'll start buying a VPN. Basically a VPN, if you're in America and you want to like tell the internet that you're in Europe, you use a VPN. Or if you're in like North Korea or one of the Koreas, whichever one would this would apply to, and you want to act like you're in America, you use a VPN. That's a, that's a, that's a, or or if you just want to like, just search the web anonymously and you want to Google stuff about taxes. Um, And that's what the VPN is for. And so I googled best VPN and I came across this website called Compare Tech that was kind of intriguing. So I linked to it. Do you see comparetech.com slash VPN? So I started reading it and I was like, this is kind of an interesting site. And I looked them up on similar web and they get millions of views. And I scroll all the way to the bottom and I notice that they're based in England. And the thing about England and the UK is that if you are a UK company n- n- that name all the things you love about about England. Uh maybe the tea. Maybe you like the queen and you like the fact that all companies numbers are publicly available. <laughs> yes. A lot of people don't know this, but if you are a company in the UK, I don't know what the threshold is. It could be as low as five. It could be as high as 10 million. And you do over 10 million in revenue. You have to, there's this thing called company's house. 
which is a very British name. It's like they're, I don't know if it's like, is it like their IRS or something like that, where you can go and log in and see all these financials from privately held companies. And I was curious about this little website called Compare Tech. So I went and looked it up on their on company's house. Can you see what their financials are? Do you have it up? I don't have it open, no. Okay, so I'm going to pull it open. I, I linked to it down there. It said financials. Um, basically, oh, fuck. It, the link broke on me. But basically, their revenue for the trailing 12 months was $12 million, And their profit was $10 million. And this little old website... That just reviews VPNs. It's I'm sure it's more sophisticated than what it looks like, but it's not right. good looking. It's not like uh, doesn't have like the best design. And I believe this website ended up selling for like two hundred million dollars. And I think it only gets wow. like a million visits a month. It sold uh, last year, or six six or ten six or twelve months ago. Interesting site, right? That's crazy. It was also only started in 2015. So sometimes I see these sites that I'm like, oh, wow, this thing gets so much traffic and they just send clicks out to whatever. You know, Basically, their business model is they write about which VPN to use and then they link you to the VPN and they get a kickback from any whichever link you click of the 10. They'll get a kickback from all 10 for, you know, some some dollar value. Right. If the VPN says, cool, every customer's worth three hundred dollars to us, we'll pay one hundred dollars to anybody that refers as a customer. And so these guys will do you know some some numbers like that. Normally, when I see the, those like really high trafficked uh, sites that sort of just look very basic, it's like, you know, this was started in 2004. And I'm like, well, OK, props to you. You had the foresight to know that like very early on in like the, you know, the, the Internet days or Google's days, somebody was like, I'm going to start reviewing credit cards. I'm going to start reviewing VPN providers. I'm going to start reviewing what email software is best. And they made what email software is best dot com. And like, you know, they, they rake in six million dollars a year you know, uh, 90% profit margin or something silly like that. And like, you know, the person is has spent the last 15 years trying to figure out, you know, the meaning of life because they, they won the business game already. And so that's normally what you see. But 2015 is like pretty new for a site like this. It's pretty new. And here, here's their financials. I went and found them on Company's House. In 2021, they did 15 million in revenue <laughs> and 13.2 million in profit. The year before mm -hmm. that, 10 million in revenue 9.5 million in profit. That's crazy. This is crazy, right? Right. Yeah, I, I, I'm a big fan of these. Now, by the way, do you ever do you play with SEO a lot? Because um, growth tactics are like martial arts. It's like you could be a black belt in jujitsu and know nothing about karate. Right. Or, you know, karate and you know nothing about taekwondo or judo. You don't know how to do any grappling and any throws. And that's how I feel about growth channels. It's like I've spent a lot of my career figuring out virality, spent a lot of my career figuring out paid marketing now with e-commerce, things like that. Uh, the thing I've never touched is SEO. Dude, and I know I, I'm like I, an absolute novice on it. Absolute. I, beginner. I know SEO like an Ivy League architect knows about construction. Like maybe I can have a conversation <laughs> with the construction worker who's going to build my project and like kind of know, but like I'm not going to be able to reference like which rivet to use. And you could kind of lie to me sometimes and I wouldn't exactly know if you were or right. Not. Right, right. You put me on the job site and um, I'm going to ask for some gloves because I don't, yeah. don't want to hurt my hands. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm just going to everything's going to be called a monkey wrench. So like I don't <laughs> entirely understand SEO, but I do believe it's the maybe the best one. Uh, like it's like like if you nail it, I think it's the best thing to nail or one it's of. like that that scene in the office when Dwight's like, uh, you know, trying to ignore Jim and then Jim's like Dwight. I mean, they're doing like a job which interview. Bear, like, yeah. <laughs> which bear is best? He's like, that's a stupid question. There's, and he's like, he goes, there's basically black school. Bear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there's basically school. Two schools of thoughts here. Wrong. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's how I feel about like you know, is SEO best? It's like I don't know, is a brown bear best or is a black bear best? Right. Like every <laughs> every one of these growth channels is like has something awesome and then something terrible. And the one you're in. You know it too well, usually, and you're like, this thing is awful. I wish I could just go on Facebook and spend money and get two, well, spend a dollar, get two dollars right. back. And the Facebook guy's like, oh, my God, you can get free traffic on Google. And the Google guy's like, holy shit, this thing grows virally. Wow. What is that? You know, and, and so I think there's no there's no best. I yeah, I would agree. And by, and by the way, this site, Compare Tech, it was sold for. Uh, yeah, it was sold for over a hundred million dollars, I believe, this year in 2022. Um, 
for like 150. All right, give me a, give me another frame breaker. That's a great first one. All right, another one. A company By called. The way, can I give a PS here just in case something good happens? A PS is uh, with the Milk Road today. We run our like our business model is is newsletter ads. And I had asked Ben, I was like, Ben, if we were going to sell a product, our own product, instead of advertise other people's products, what, what would be, what product would work best? What bear is best, Ben? And he was like, VPN, dude. I, <laughs> he's, like, yeah. he's like, we should just launch our own VPN. Uh, fits the audience. You got to uh, come up with a better name, business though. model. We just have to buy an existing VPN and plug in our distribution. And so if anyone has a VPN, they want to sell me. Uh, I, I'm happy to either buy one or build our own. Yeah, you got to come up with like some cute branding, like VP Nope. You know what I mean? Like, you can't track right. me. You know, like, you got to come up with something cute, just like you do with Milk Road I, and Silk I think Road. we got to just get get rid of VP and N. That's just too whatever. It needs to be like, you know, a whatever, Mysterio or like, you know, some like, you know, s you know, secret juice. And it's like, oh, I, secret I use secret juice. juice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on board I with use, that. Don't tell, don't tell, you know. <laughs> yeah, just call it don't tell mom. Uh, all right. The next one, Quinn Street. Have you heard of Quinn Street? Mm, no. All right, Google Quinn Street and go to their website for me. All right, I'm going. And tell me like right, what my the My guess is, I thought this was a fashion brand if you had told me nothing else, but okay, I'm guessing it's not. All right, Quinn Street, I just see a guy and it says, where performance drives digital. And then there's like another stock photo and it says- And this guy- Accessing is, high intent prospects. <laughs> this guy's a horrible stock mod. Like these guys on yeah. here aren't ugly enough the, to be like a stock model. They're not good looking <laughs> enough to be- like they look like they're like out of like a like Spanish or like geometry textbook. Telemundo. <laughs> yeah, like they, they they just look like just normal. You know, it's like it's they're so normal that yeah. they don't even look. Why stock. does your skin have like you know normal people wrinkles and blemishes? That's not right. Stock photo. You need to be perfectly airbrushed. Right. Is this the but, founder? It looks like the founder. I don't know. And I don't know who the founder is, but it's like a simple ass website <laughs> oh that's not God. good looking. <laughs> All right, this bit. Dude, I'm going through the slideshow. This slideshow is hilarious, dude. This looks like, you know, Meredith from The Office. This is like. That's what I'm saying. They're like so normal hilarious. that they're not, that, that that it looks silly. So this, this company, I'm going to explain what they do. I'm going to tell you how big they are. So what this company does is they used to own, and I don't know if they still own these sites, but I'll tell you what they, what they still own now. But they used to own websites like directoryofschools.com or campuscorner.com or learninginlife.com, or findtherightschool.com. Just like these like boring websites that don't look that cool. And when you Google Ohio insurance, Ohio auto insurance, they come up number one, you enter an in information, and they sell that information to the highest bidder for insurance people. This website, it's like ugly looking, it's simple looking, and you like a lot of people disrespect it. They made about 600 million in revenue last year. It's publicly <laughs> traded. It's publicly it's traded. Is, that's crazy, right? This is this is another frame breaking company. Like they have, Dude, I, if you click their about page on Quinn Street, they're about or one of their forms, like it doesn't work. Like it's like it goes to like a four hundred one. Like it, it, they don't have it set up. Dude, okay, you know when you meet someone and you're like, I can't tell if this person is absolutely a genius or if they're completely idiotic, or if you're in San Francisco, you see somebody walk into a fancy restaurant with like a hoodie and like, you know, they're like wearing one Allbird and one Croc. And you're like, all right, this person's either homeless or a billionaire, right? Like that's like a pretty common situation in San Francisco. That's how I feel when I go to websites like this. I'm like, these are either the biggest dummies on earth and don't, cause I can't, I can't understand what they do, right? Their website is full of pages. It just says like, like performance are our product or something yeah, like that. Yeah, It's like going into a video game and like you talk, you bump into one of the, the stock characters that just like, is like, Oh, hey, didn't see you there. Hello. And it's just, I keeps repeating on loop some random shit that doesn't make any sense. That's their website. So these websites, they're either like absolute money printers or it's like, you know, someone's aunt who's got some dream of like, you know, being successful and then they're never going to make it because this makes no sense. I can't tell. And now when I get to finally, then I see the, the key money tab, investor relations. If you got an investor relations tab on your, on your website, like it's working, right? Like, you know, Put in the Bill Clinton clip where he's like, I did not have relations with that woman. That's how that's how I feel when I see the investor relations tab. I know some shit's going down. That's hilarious. That. Our software is the worst. Have you heard of HubSpot? See, most CRMs are a cobbled together mess, but HubSpot is easy to adopt and actually looks gorgeous. I think I love our new CRM. Our software is the best. HubSpot, grow better. 
it's kind of th this whole website and this whole brand. It reminds me of like a fourth grade classroom with like the uh, like, you know, like teamwork and like each letter, like it spells a certain word. Do you know what I mean? Or like uh, yeah, it's like teamwork. T is for teamwork. E is, yeah. for, <laughs> e is for everybody. <laughs> that, that, that's what the, this whole website looks like. But it makes 500, 600 ish million in revenue. Market cap isn't very great because it's a uh, lead gen company. And those typically just don't have good market caps. But it's just crazy. They just ignored all the unimportant stuff. Like how good does their uh, website, their like uh, public facing brand website look? And they only focus on just the results, I guess. And they own all these other websites that don't look so bad and they clearly get results. But it's like a really interesting company and it's another frame breaking business where they just don't give a shit about the things that most people care about. And it works. It's effective. So I recently met two guys who run a business like this and they've run three other businesses like this and exited them. I'm going to share. I can't share the story now, but I'm hoping one month from today, I could share a kind of crazy story about them. So I'm just going to put that there. Cra a teaser for a future one month from today. You know, there will be a, st a crazy story about these two guys. Um, I might even have them on the podcast. I don't know yet. But um, but this is this is insane. This is a Sampar special. How did you find Quinn Street? Where where were you? What was in the what VPN and private browser did you have open when you were searching for this? Two ways. One, a guy named Jackie Chu, who uh, I like, just like tweeted at this, at this uh, tweeted me this a while ago, and I just saved it. And then number two, Joe Spicer, my partner in a bunch of stuff, he told me he used to work with them. He owned an ad network, and he was like in the early two thousands. Like I worked with them. They basically right now they do car insurance and things like that, but they used to do University of Phoenix. So University right. of Phoenix, you they would you know they owned all these school websites. You would Google like. What's a good online degree? They figured out that, and this what what the, the the these guys look unsophisticated. They are not. They're very sophisticated. They like know how to get traffic to websites. They know how to do SEO. Yeah. Like they look like a fat guy who like it trains jujitsu, just like just like you talked about. Like oh, this guy he's good, and but then he like you know can like put you in a headlock, but in three seconds. That's what these guys are. Yeah. Uh, and so anyway, uh, I found it just by goofing around and talking to people. This is crazy. So they own insurance.com, insure.com, carinsurance.com, card ratings.com, money rates, bank tracker, M M1, and modernize home services. And, and then they partner like, with way more. It's wild. By the way, that's a really great source for info is talk to people at ad networks. Yeah, they know or everything. People who like work at Google Cloud or AWS, they know everything. They see everything. They, they, right? they, they know who's making money and who's not. They know uh, who's getting traffic and who's not. And uh, like, if you ever wanted to go figure out your next gig, go be like, uh, yeah, I'll be janitor at this like mobile ad network, or I'm going to go be janitor at AWS. Uh, my payment, all I need is like login credentials into the dashboard, right? Like to, I'll be a account rep for high value clients. And therefore I need that list of the high value accounts that we have. And you basically just mine that. And you're like, all right, which one of the, you know, who am I going to copy? <laughs> right, right, right. right. <laughs> Dude, there's a website. <laughs> like going to a going to a barber shop and you see like the, the yeah. number like I'll take the number twelve, <laughs> the, the fuckboy fade, please. Yeah. The line on the side. Exactly like that, please. <laughs> do you guys do eyebrow lightning bolts? No? Yeah. Okay, fine. I'll take the number twelve then. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> so funny. <laughs> Dude, all right. The next one is in your world. Not just because he's an Indian guy. But because <laughs> he's he's an yeah, econ come guy. Up with some reason, come up with some reason that it's not just that. <laughs> I don't know, man. Indian entrepreneurs, you guys are taking over the world. I'm sure you, you guys all are part of the same tribe. You know one another, kind of. There's only a billion of you. Um, so this guy. All right. So I was looking at the Inc. 5000 list. Of all the list, that's the only one that like kind of matters. It's still, you could still Does game it. Does it really, dude? I see this all the time. I see the random ass some digital agency that I've worked with that does not like nothing special. They're like, we're a three time Inc. 5000 winner. I'm like, well, you can still game based it. Off of? You could still, it's, it's supposed to be based on revenue and they're supposed, so I don't trust Inc. anymore, but I used to. And when I did, like, they, they, okay, let's, 
I clicked the link for 2022. BlockFi is number one. BlockFi basically just went out of business like <laughs> three months ago. So I think that tells me everything I need to know yeah, about they, you and your goddamn list. You know? They had already written the story, though. <laughs> the greatest, you know, greatest active athletes, Bill Russell. Like He just passed away two weeks ago. Like, I'm, they're, what, what's they're going like, on here? They like created the list and someone who works here like, Hey, uh, we got to remove block five from number one. And they're like, huh, seems like a lot of work. They're like, look, <laughs> I don't make up the rules here. I just think them up the and write them down. According to us is 245,000% this year. It's like, yeah, you forgot the negative sign, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, but it's like, it's so far away. The computer. <laughs> I don't know where my charger is. Yeah. <laughs> That's what the 85,000 is. You go to their office. <laughs> no one knows what the charger is at eight. <laughs> so we can so order funny. one, but we would need our computer to do that. I guess I could swing my best buy on my way home. <laughs> yeah, but they're like, oh, it's happy hour. <laughs> Daiquiri's. Have you ever been at a... Uh, have you ever been at like a company happy hour and like you'll hear news that something really, really bad has happened? And had you heard about that during the day, you'd be like livid. And, I'm like, going to act kill. on this. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to fucking kill someone like this is livid. And then you hear about it like when you're laughing at happy hour, you're like, huh? Yeah. And like th th <laughs> that's like what happened. Here. You know what I'm talking about? You ever been at like a company happy hour? Do you like hear bad news? And you're like, oh, hundred percent. <laughs> we used to do ours on Friday. It was called the Friday wind down. And it was like wine and cheese and like whatever, you know, that office. You guys posh. don't so, seem so like, like a bunch of wine and cheese types of guy though. Like I know, but the, the office uh, before I joined, the office was pretty, you know, adult and mature and like sophisticated people. And then I joined, I started hiring people that would sleep at the office. And so like, it became this crazy culture clash. We ended up ending it, but it was so funny because it would be like Friday. You look at the numbers like, well, still don't have product market fit, I guess. All right, let's just head over to the to the office bar and just drink for a bit. And like, oh, uh, server's down. It's like, how much traffic do you think we get on the weekends anyway? Like, <laughs> yeah. And then like one like guy would go back to his desk to like fix the thing or like they check, they check their email like, oh, we got to go fix this. And then everybody else would be like, watch them walk away be like all right if he looks like he's having trouble i'll go too <laughs> yeah. like no don't <laughs> <laughs> that's how you talk it's just the voice of like well let me know if you need anything <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, Sorry, dude. Right. I was looking at Where this eight five thousand, which apparently is just bullshit. Blockfi. I didn't realize. I saw Blockfi was number one. I didn't. I didn't realize that that was the company that like went out of business. With <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the list is kind of null at this point. Doesn't really matter. But I, I saw someone who's number six or number seven. It's called High Key. It's like a keto cookie business type of thing. And the the guy's last name. I don't know if it says it on this list, but this other list I was looking at it was Patel. And they use his real name, but I was like, wait, I think that sounds like AJ Patel. So who I recognize and high key was like six or five. Do you see what it is on the list? Yeah, it's f number five or six. Yeah. And they grew by 41,000%. I think that just means 41X, right? So like if it was a million there, do 42 million now or 41 million. Yeah. Again, these numbers. Uh, by the way, my, new, my new favorite word, fugazi. Dude, have yeah. you ever heard this word? <laughs> yeah. It just means like uh, fake, right? Yeah, but I'm I'm all about the word fugazi. I feel like I can own this corner. I don't know anyone who says it, and absolute pleasure, absolute treat to say say yeah, that word. Fugazi. It's like well, it's like the most popular line in uh, Wolf of Wall Street. Fugazi, oh, fugazi. Okay. Uh, yeah, he goes, it's all fugazi, fake. You know, yeah. just carry the twelve. You know, like I just can't do this type of math. <laughs> so this guy uh, AJ Patel, he started this thing called High Key, which I would imagine is in the thirty or forty million range. But listen to this guy. So he's probably in his later 30s probably 35 or 36 so in like 2012 2013 2014 he started a vitamin brand and it only did okay and then he started also tinkering with a skincare brand which it actually did much better it got to like 10 million or so in revenue he hired a ceo the ceo kind of like drove it into the ground and didn't really do that well and so he started focusing again to his vitamin brand and he's like look it's doing okay but who's the best customer of a vitamin company dogs <laughs> <laughs> because you 
and this is it. I'm not disparaging him, but like, do, do they work? Yeah, why not? <laughs> like Fugazi, you know, like forget. <laughs> yeah, forgot. Welcome to Fugazi Inc. We yeah. make supplements for dogs. They'll never tell you if it works or doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. It's like, uh, it's like, uh, what's that memory loss game uh, where it's like brain teasers? You know, brain dacity or brain acid. Yeah, yeah. It's called. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's like neurosity. No, no. Yeah, brain, it's like having yeah. like like a Whatever. like a like an ad campaign towards those with amnesia, like does or or, or with like Alzheimer's. It's like, does it work? I, yeah, maybe. Uh, so that's like what what like these vitamins for dogs are. Like, who knows if it actually works? And he starts growing this company. And he pivots from like you know normal vitamins to dog vitamins, and he starts growing this thing, and it takes off after a while, and he and, it, and he cr and he kills it. He gets to 25 million in revenue and then he sells part of it uh, to a PE company and he took $60 million off the table. Then he grew it for another three years and sold it for like $650 million and he still owned like half of it. So collectively he made 300, 400 million dollars at the age of 32. And this guy isn't in Silicon Valley. He's not in New York. He's not in Brooklyn. He's in Orlando, Florida capital of jorts jort city usa <laughs> you know jort city white new balance town uh, we have USA. like 22 22 listeners in orlando they all just collectively looked down at their lap and came back and nodded <laughs> like well oh, facts a fact baby yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like <laughs> like you know the england or uh, illinois is the land of lincoln florida is like land of dog the bounty hunter you know like <laughs> and that's where this this he, he's born in india indian immigrant came over, decided for some reason, the Florida's the place and knocked it out the park and not really well known. And I was just like researching him and high key is now number six on this list. They grew 41%, 41,000%. So 41 X. So if they were doing a million in revenue or 500,000 in revenue, they're doing 20 to 40 million in revenue now. So it's another nine figure in value brand. And this guy's just quietly crushing it. And I love it. And I watched a talk with him. Uh, there was this thing. There's this website called capitalism.com. <laughs> Dude, I'm <laughs> reading the transcript of that talk right now as you speak. It's pretty crazy. So so let, let me just recap. This guy's known mostly for, he sold Zesty Paws, that, that company, for $600 million, I think. Right? So the, the pay. It was over. In the, in the, in the transcript, he, he says, yeah, the public number is six, 600, but it actually got raised uh, a little bit higher. Wow. And he um, he also has high key snacks he, in this thing. It says his first business, uh, like his first kind of side hustle was he was selling. He's like, I played Zynga poker and I got to a million. By the way, I did this exact same thing. That's why this stood out to me. I, yeah, I, I told on, you, on you guys are brothers, stars. man. You guys. Are yeah. Cousins. Now I know the connection. So he got to a million chips. He sold it for thirty seven bucks. I, I did this on poker stars. I grinded my way. I got I, I accumulated a million. That was my actual first million. It was a million fake poker chips on poker stars and I sold it for $13. And I tell you what, I've never felt like more of a prostitute in my life. I was like, <laughs> wow, I just worked so hard for like three months to get the, you know, like just grinding the free money game. And I got to a million chips and I sold it for $13 via PayPal. And then I proceeded to lose the $13 immediately on the real money tables. And I was like, well, I never felt like, you know, <laughs> you, should, so, you just had to go take a shower. I just, I feel dirty. Yeah. I Googled like, <laughs> can I declare bankruptcy just out of embarrassment? And like, you know, is there, is there some like version of that? Cause I was so embarrassed at like the, uh, the terrible trade I had done. He said he did that same thing. And he started doing that as a, like as a market basically on eBay. And I think he made like a hundred or 200 grand just doing the, the fake poker chips, like buying and selling basically. Which is, it's kind of like, a, you know, it's kind of like a, a kid being good at chess when they're six. Like, if you're doing that yeah. on eBay, it's like, yeah, you're going to, yeah, win. well, just here's all my money. Just hopefully you'll yeah. figure it out one day. Just get me back when yeah. you can. Like, that's what you do when you, when you meet people doing things like that. That's like, it just, we, we need this guy on, uh, and I'll give you two. I'm reasons. talking to him. I've been talking to him on Facebook. I got him. He's, he clearly has, you know, he comes from our, he's cut from the same, uh, the same cloth. I don't know what, what, what kind of cloth that is, but but it's definitely <laughs> yeah. our cloth. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll assume it's silk. Uh, but yeah. dude, this guy, he, I started becoming friends with him on Facebook. Never talked to him in my life. There's a software that I needed to use. I don't want to out him, but there's a software I needed to use, and it's like ten grand a year. And I mentioned to him that I use it. He goes, "Oh, here, I have an annual subscription. Here's my password." 
and he's been letting me use his free like ten thousand dollar a year yeah. subscription. So this guy, this guy is my guy. My I, man. I, yeah. Yeah. And so, wait, what's the second reason why why we need him on here? Because I just googled his name, AJ Patel. Now here's a guy sold a company for over six hundred million. Sold another company. He's got hikey snacks. You know, he's sitting on store shelves everywhere in the, across the country. Guess what Google puts up in the 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 like Google thinks I'm talking about Patel AJ MD, the doctor in San Francisco, dude. No matter what an Indian guy does in business, the doctor is still number one. <laughs> He's still at the top of the ranks, and so he needs to come on this pod so we can we can get this guy's SEO. But up it's like so that uh, he's number one. What's uh, Jessica Alba's company? Honest, the guy who started yeah. that. His name's Brian Lee. He started like that shoe dazzle and like Legal Zoom. If you Google Brian Lee, like he ain't coming up. Oh, dude, it's uh, a wrestler. It's a <laughs> it's a guy who looks like Undertaker <laughs> or like the Big Show or something. Yeah, like Brian wow. Lee. Like it doesn't matter if you're a billion or not. You 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 know you you can't you. Which, by the way, fame is always way better than than money. So right. wrestling, <laughs> wrestling beats being a billionaire. But this guy in his talk, he said something amazing. So he, like he hired the CEO to run his skincare brand. And he says, yeah, like it's stunk. This guy, like I gave him the reins and I told him to do it. And he totally talked slick to me. And I thought he knew what he was doing. And, he, and it didn't work. And the guy goes, um, the interviewer goes, well, was it a sad day when you fired him? Like, it must have been hard, right? And AJ goes, no, it was awesome. Firing him was so easy because he was so bad. And I felt so great, like getting rid of all the dead weight. And I look at business as a living org organism. And like, I have zero emotional attachment if someone doesn't serve the business and I'm willing to fire myself or anyone else. And I have zero sadness about it. And I saw that and I was like, hell yeah. I call that, you know what I call that? I call that Korean convenience store owner energy you remember <laughs> you remember here's why you remember um during remember like the rodney king riots like in the 90s you remember like yeah. these pictures of like the korean store business owners with like shotguns standing on top of their like they're like no like, we like yeah like let's go <laughs> i was talking to like some people i invested in the other day and they were telling me about their business and like how they're like things aren't going that well i'm like well can you do me a favor like do a screen share let me see your calendar and like it was totally open and like they hadn't booked a lot. Like I'm like, what? I'm like every morning meditation, afternoon walk. You know, yeah, I'm like, um, dude, from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. It's got to you have to have sales calls set up with prospective customers. And like, don't give me this nonsense of like, oh, well, you know, it went out of business, but we learned a lot or like, you know, like we just couldn't or the things that you're suggesting, Sam, they don't scale. I'm like, no, 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 dude. Right now. You need to have that Korean store owner energy where it's just like, if you don't make this work, you don't feed your family and maybe yeah. you're going to get deported. Like you need to have that, like, <laughs> like <laughs> that, that energy of like starvation if it, with a side of deportation is how yeah. Sam likes his dishes served. <laughs> Dude, you have to have that energy sometimes. Like, of course, like once things going well, yeah, you got to get like beyond like scale and all that stuff. But like early on, it doesn't, call yourself a startup, call yourself. It, it doesn't matter what you call yourself. You're just a convenience store owner. And like some convenience stores, you go there and they have every type of kind bar you could ever imagine. That's where I'm going. Other type of convenience stores, like, you know, they don't have what, what I want. I ain't ever going there again. You got to be that convenience store that has every kind bar, every cliff bar, has a shtick and is just grinding and knows your name. And they are willing to call me like, you know, like, what do you want? The usual? That type of, that's what like a lot of startup uh, uh, founders need. And so, uh, this guy, AJ Patel, he's got that Korean store business owner energy, you know, that like immigrant hustle. I love it. Yeah, he, he's great. And that's great. And I feel like we know so many people that it's like I meet with them and I hear them talking and it's like, oh, um, let's just fast forward to the part where you write a medium article called my next chapter or our next our next adventure. <laughs> and then you're going to sign off saying onwards. Yeah, like you're a fucking captain of a ship in the yeah. 1700s. Like. Ahoy, matey, your business is failing. Wake up, do something. Don't just sit there and lose and then go work at Facebook and write my next chapter. I'm so excited to lead, you know, you know, digital, digital ad products at Facebook now for the next two years of my life before I go out and do this same stupid thing again. It's like, wake up, go figure this out, right? Figure out something that's going to work. I don't care what you do. I don't even care if it's bad, but like, I need to see some like, some serious action being taken, uh, you know, and like realize your shit is not working. And like I invest in startups and I know that the name of the game is you're going to lose most of your money and only a few are going to like return all the money. But when I hear like their updates, I'm like, all right, 
I, I'm okay with swinging and missing. I'm not actually okay with it, but I know that's part of the game and it's just a numbers game. But for those not swinging, it doesn't matter if I only invested $5,000, I reply and I'm like, oh, you're losing and you suck for these reasons and you need to improve because I gave you my hard earned money so you can have a good shot at trying something and you are not trying or taking a good shot and that's pissing me off. And I told some of my other angel investor friends and they're like, well, I kind of feel that way, but I never say that. I'm like, what do you, like, what, what, why not? Why wouldn't you say this? It doesn't matter how little or how much you invested. You gave your hard earned money to someone to like take a swing, step to the plate, dog, like swing, but don't like give me this nonsense. We, um, uh, we have this phrase I use in, in all my companies, which is that, uh, all right, people are going to make mistakes, but there's two types of mistakes and you have to, def you have to decide when you, when you make a mistake, which one is it? Did you make an error of action or an error of inaction? An error of action is you tried something and you did it wrong or it didn't work or it had a bad result. But you, you know, you were trying really hard to do something and you just messed it up. That's OK. That's a fumble. No problem. And then there's an error of inaction, which is your mistake was that you didn't do something. You didn't think about something. You didn't anticipate it. You didn't plan. You know, you, you just forgot to do something. You dropped the ball. And that's the unforgivable one. Right. So it's like. I'm always like number one to be like, bro, no problem. This was an error of action. That's great. I love errors of action. That's how you get better. And like never feel bad or sorry for an error of action. For an error of inaction, I now have a problem. And so right. I feel the same way with founders that I invest in. It's like some of them, I'm like, oh man, they're just banging their head against this wall. I will only ever say something to somebody if I feel like if it's a, if it, they're making errors of action. When they're making errors of inaction, my experience, I did it twice now. And I was just like, hey guys, like, your like your update makes it sounds like everything's okay, but like read what you said, everything is not okay, and like you got to do something. What can we do here? And I like rolled up my sleeves and I was like helping them with their strategy and their pivot and then their investor deck to raise money because they're running out of money. And I same thing with the other one. I was like, hey guys, like this is just not working. Like you don't have product market fit. You have like two customers after two years. Like what's going on? And they were like, no, we're really excited about the pipeline. We think that's that doesn't that's not fair. And I was just like, oh, my God, not only were you like not aware of it, you're actually in denial of it. Uh, wow. This is like, you know, a complete waste of my time. And, you know, sure enough, in both cases, they, you know, uh, my like several days worth of like full time effort to try to help them uh, resulted in nothing. And so, you know, I, I now I'm picky. I'm a little bit pickier where I'll test the waters and I'll see, does this person, if given a dose of reality, do they take it and say more, please? Or are they like, oh, I don't want this. <laughs> And it's like, oh, if you don't want reality, then I don't want to, you know, I was just, it was a mistake on my part. I, I judged wrong. You know, my, 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 my check was written to the wrong person here. As the great Dr. Phil once said, don't piss on my back and tell me it's rain. <laughs> 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 All right. I got one last one. Um, I have an interesting one. So it's like a Billy of the week, but someone who like people never talk about, or at least they don't talk about a lot. And he's, he's got that gap. And when I say he, it's actually him and his wife. And his wife is actually the more interesting person. But uh, this guy, a little bit, is more front-facing. His name's Stuart Resnick. Have you ever heard of Stuart Resnick? Do you know? Have we talked about him? I don't know the name, but I just Googled it. And now I know. They do the, the wonderful company or whatever. So, so give me his story. All right. So listen to this guy. His name's Stuart Resnick. Him and his wife. His wife's name is Linda. They're, they're based out of California. And so in the 1970s, he started a janitor business. And he just basically like was a janitor at one point, I think. And then he eventually hired a few more and he got contracts with buildings. And once he was in those buildings and had the contracts, he expanded to uh, security guards. And at one point he had a thousand armed security guards on staff. So he like grew this janitor business into a security guard business. And it was amazing. He got some lucrative contracts to uh, LAX and it turned out to be a great business. And he ended up selling it and he made a little bit of money. And with that money, he eventually bought the Franklin Mint which at the time was one of the world's largest sellers of uh, coins, collectible coins. And oddly enough, you know who owns the Franklin Mint right now? No, no idea. Former MFM Ty guest, Lopez. Ty Lopez. Does he really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that, was my, that was a joke. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> basically, the good job. So basically, <laughs> like in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and even up to the 90s, like all the Marilyn Monroe coins and Elvis Presley coins, the Franklin Mint. They uh, they're the ones who uh, started it or uh, who uh, produced a lot of them. And so from there, he parlayed that into a couple of things. And now at this point, 
his company. It's called uh, Wonderful Brands. They own a, a bunch of really interesting brands. So they own Landmark Wines. That's not that interesting. Teleflora. Do you know what Teleflora is? It's a no. pretty big $350 million a year business where you call. It's like 1-800-Flowers, a competitor. Gotcha. But, he, but here's the big ones that they own. The first is Wonderful Pistachios. You've seen those at the store, right? Mm -hmm. The second is Palm Wonderful. You know what Palm Wonderful? Yeah, Palm Juice. Yeah, pomegranate. Yeah, juice. Palm Juice. And so basically, the wife Linda, she uh, she's like, you know, I love pomegranates, but there's no. This was like in the in the '80s. She's like, there's not really a good pomegranate juice. Let's let's do this juice. And she goes, you know what? Uh, pomegranate. It's good for your heart. It's uh, what else is it? And she like learns about what it's good for. And she was like, you know, it makes women have like an hourglass figure. Like it like is like good for you. And like, it's you know, it makes you feel good, I guess. And so they made, she made the bottle like a, you know, it's like a, if you ever seen it, it's, it's like, like a, a signature bottle. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a signature bottle. <laughs> well, they own another company that has a wonderful signature bottle called Fiji water. Mm. So they, they also own Fiji, which has a square bottle. And at this point they're privately owned. They're one of the largest producers of uh, one of the largest farm owners in America. So they own uh, almond and pistachio farms and they do four billion dollars a year in revenue. And so it says in 2018, they were the wealthiest farmers in the country. Yeah. And this guy there, you know, the the I believe the the wife, Linda, she's Jewish, but she's got this like Southern Belle charm to her. Like she's from like Alabama or something. She reminds me of, like an old like, you know, Faulkner novel. Like she reminds me of like a character in Forrest Gump movie. And right. and but she, they're based out of California. And then he's got like a little New York vibe where he like kind of comes off as like cool and hip. But they're farmers. They own yeah. they're, they're huge farmers and they're like have the best brands out there. Fiji is a great brand. And they created these. They're not just acquiring these, right? No, they made them. Yeah, they they make these brands and they own way more. Wonderful is a really good brand. I love Wonderful Pistachios. And so these guys just kill it. They're just quietly crushing it. And I think at this point, I think they're like 81 or 82 years old. And I still watch talks with them and they talk about how they go, well, how do you stay close to their customers? And they're like, well, I just read Twitter all day. And I like read about, and like, I sometimes <laughs> I'll too. like, they're yeah. just like us. <laughs> yeah, they're just like us. <laughs> and so sometimes they, they just like look at like what customer they're like, we use Facebook and we just like skim like our page and we just see like which complaints are actually good and which are, are, are nonsense. And we reply and then we make changes and we just run our business that way. And they're really interesting people. So that's the billies of the week. Stuart Resnick and his wife, Linda. Linda. Wow. Yeah. She looks like the type of person that would give you a kiss on the cheek and then wipe off the lipstick. And yeah. you're just like, <laughs> oh, what just happened? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love those women. They always smell so good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> like going to the bathroom at one of the, the, the at that a woman like that's house is just an absolute pleasure. There's so many things you didn't yeah. know. So many scents, scents you didn't even know existed. Like you'll spend 15 minutes just trying to wash your hands and get out of there because it's like, oh, wow, this is. They, this is like a handkerchief instead of like a you know a towel. This is yeah. amazing. Yeah, at the end of this, you're going to be an expert on butterscotch candy. Like you're going to know <laughs> yeah, all about exactly. and like those little like red, green, and yellow candies that like what the fuck? What are these things? It's like <laughs> fruit punch candies. Uh, so I love this brand. Um, this is and amazing. I love this. And by the way, this Teleflora one eight hundred flowers thing. Why doesn't somebody create? Like one eight hundred flowers or Teleflora flowers as just a ghost kitchen on DoorDash and on Uber Eats. Like why is this, does that exist? Like what, why can't I just order flowers? I've seen a flower thing when I go on there, but I think it's like DoorDash's own. I think you could create like either edible arrangements or edible flower thing and just partner with local florists to fulfill the demand. Um, and it's like, it's like way better than food. But uh, I know whenever there's like a birthday or something like that, that's my go-to thing now. It's just like, hey, I'm going to DoorDash them something. Right. Cause it's like, I never plan to DoorDash them. What's like a good enough. Like, like I'll McDonald's? do like, like the last one I did was like, you know, like a, a, a bunch of boba tea, like this person like really likes boba teas. So I sent them a bunch of boba or I'll send them like, you know, uh, pizza and wings or I'll send them a Cinnabon and whatever, or I'll send them, you know, a bunch of ice cream or chocolate or whatever. Cause it's like, I can procrastinate until 30 minutes before like their birthday, you know, is over and I could push this button and still be a great friend. Uh, so let me do that. You know, that's, that's a great that's idea. A great friend machine. Noah Kagan for my birthday gifted me like 200 bucks worth of 16 ounce bottles of Topo Chico from Costco. And I like that was it was like a it was easy. So it was like a month and a half su supply of Topo Chico. And it's like all I drank for two and a half months or something. Right. It was awesome.
Yeah, on your birthday, I tried to see, like, is there such a thing as gas station gift cards? But they, it, was tough. <laughs> it was really tough to find anything that would yeah. work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> I was like, can I open a tab in my friend's name at your, yeah. at your gas station? <laughs> you he'll, he'll walk deliver. in from time to time. Yeah. And, you guys sell dip and, like, yeah. uh, Coke Zero? <laughs> Do you guys sell nacho cheese? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What no, are you just, just the nacho just cheese spoons? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If he brings his own cup, can he just walk out with some hot cheese? Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. That's disgusting. Right. That's, um, that's the episode. That was, dude, you, you really did carry that episode. That was amazing. This is this is this entire episode is going to be called the Sam Par Special. And uh, it's just Sam bringing hit after hit after hit. You want to know those quads to work. You want to know what I'm most proud about? Guess how long uh, uh, that took me to prepare. I think you would be proud if you spent a long time. Like 45 minutes. Oh, it's, that went the other way. <laughs> it's 1 p.m. now. We started recording at noon. I block off on my schedule from 11 to noon is my research time. I did all of this in that one hour time. And I even took a bathroom break. And I definitely did some pull-ups. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, did you like take uh, the limitless pill? How did you do all that in like 45 <laughs> minutes? Uh, I just got a good brain. I don't know. I just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I just, my brain's good. I just was on fire today. I drank a bunch of coffee. Nice. But that's uh, it. All right, that's we're out of here.